India's Love Lyrics by Lawrence Hope, published in 1901. Recorded by Helen Williford Lauer in 12 sections of seven poems each for LibriVox. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. India's Love Lyrics, Section 1 less than the dust less than the dust beneath thy chariot wheel less than the rust that never stained thy sword less than the trust thou hast in me o lord even less than these less than the weed that grows beside thy door less than the speed of hours spent far from thee less than the need thou hast in life of me, even less am I. Since I, O Lord, am nothing unto thee, see here thy sword, I make it keen and bright, love's last reward, death comes to me tonight. Farewell, Zahir Udin. To the unattainable. Oh, that my blood were water, thou thirst, and thou and I in some far desert land, how would I shed it gladly, if but first it touched thy lips before it reached the sand. Once, ah, oh, the gods were good to me. I threw myself upon a poison snake that crept where my beloved, a lesser love we knew than this which now consumes me wholly, slept. But thou, alas, what can I do for thee? By fate and thine own beauty, set above the need of all or any aid from me, too high for service as too far for love. In the Early Curly Morning Song by Valgovin The fields are full of poppies And the skies are very blue By the temple in the coppice I wait, beloved, for you The level land is sunny And the errant air is gay With scent of rose and honey Will you come to me today? From carven walls above me smile lovers, many a pair. Oh, take this rose and love me. She has twined it in her hair. He advances, she retreating, pursues and holds her fast. The sculptor left them meeting in a close embrace at last. Through centuries together in the carven stone they lie. In the glow of golden weather and endless azure sky. Oh, that we who have for pleasure so short and scant a stay should waste our summer leisure. Will you come to me today? The temple bells are ringing for the marriage month has come. I hear the women singing and the throbbing of the drum. And when the song is failing or the drums a moment mute, the weirdly wistful wailing of the melancholy flute. Little life has got to offer, and little man to lose. Since today fate deigns to proffer, oh, wherefore then refuse to take this transient hour in the dusky temple gloom, while the poppies are in flower and the mango trees bloom? And if fate remember later, and come to claim her due, what sorrow will be greater than the joy I had with you? For today, lit by your laughter, between the crushing years, I will chance in the hereafter eternities of tears.
Reverie of Mohammed Akram at the Tamarind Tank The desert is parched in the burning sun, and the grass is scorched and white. But the sand is past, and the march is done. We are camping here tonight. I sit in the shade of the temple walls, while the cadenced water evenly falls, and a peacock out of the jungle calls to another on yonder tomb. Above, half seen in the lofty gloom, strange works of a long-dead people loom. Obscene and savage and half-effaced, an elephant hunt, a musician's feast, and curious matings of man and beast. What did they mean to the men who are long since dust, whose fingers traced in this arid waste these rioting, twisted figures of love and lust? Strange, weird things that no man may say, things humanity hides away, secretly done. Catch the light of the living day, smile in the sun, Cruel things that men may not name, naked here, without fear or shame, laughed in the carven stone. Deep in the temple's innermost shrine is set, where the bats and shadows dwell, the worn and ancient symbol of life, at rest in its oval shell, by which the men who of old the land possessed represented their great destroying power. I cannot forget that just as my life was touching its fullest flower, love came and destroyed it all in a single hour. Therefore the dual mystery suits me well. Sitting alone, the tank's deep water is cool and sweet, soothing and fresh to the wayworn feet. Dreaming, under the tamarind shade, one silently thanks the men who made so green a place in this bitter land of sunburnt sand. The peacocks scream and the gray doves coo. Little green talkative parrots woo and small gray swirls with fear scants at alien me in their furtive glance. Come shyly with quivering fur to see the stranger under their tamarind tree. Daylight dies. The campfires redden like angry eyes. The tents show white in the glimmering light. Spirals of tremulous smoke arise to the purple skies. And the hum of the camp sounds like the sea drifting over the sand to me. Afar, in the desert, some wild voice sings to a jangling zither with minor strings, and under the stars growing keen above, I think of the thing that I love. A beautiful thing, alert, serene, with passionate, dreaming, wistful eyes, dark and deep as mysterious skies, seen from a vessel at sea. Alas, you drifted away from me, and time and space have rushed in between, but they cannot undo the thing that has been, though it never again may be. You were mine, from dusk until dawning light, for the perfect whole of that bygone night, you belong to me. They say that love is a light thing, a foolish thing, and a slight thing, a ripe fruit, rotten at core. They speak in this futile fashion to me, who am racked with passion, tormented beyond compassion, for ever and ever more. They say that possession lessens a lover's delight. As radiant mornings fade into afternoon, I held what I loved in my arms for many a night, 
yet ever the morning lightened the sky too soon. Beyond our tents the sands stretched level and far, around this little oasis of tamarind trees. A curious eastern fragrance fills the breeze from the ruinous temple garden where roses are. I dream of the rose-like perfume that fills your hair, of times when my lips were free, of your soft closed eyes, while down in the tank the waters ripple and rise, and the flying foxes silently cleave the air. The present is subtly wedded into the past, my love of you with the purple Indian dusk with its clinging scent of sandal incense and musk and withering jasmine flowers. My eyes grow dim and my senses fail at last while the lonely hours follow each other silently, one by one, till the night is almost done. Then weary, and drunk with dreams, with my garments damp, and heavy with dew, I wander towards the camp. Tired with a brain in which fancy and fact are blent, I stumble across the ropes till I reach my tent, and then to rest, to ensweeten my sleep with lies, to dream I lie in the light of your long lost eyes, my lips set free to love and linger over your soft, loose hair, to dream I lay your delicate beauty bare, to solace my fevered eyes. Ah, oh, if my life might end in a night like this, drift into death from dreams of your granted kiss. Verses You are my God, and I would fain adore you with sweet and secret rites of other days. Burn scented oil in silver lamps before you. Pour perfume on your feet with prayer and praise. Yet we are one. Your gracious condescension granted and grants the loveliness I crave. One, in the perfect sense of Eastern mention. Gold and the bracelet, water and the wave. Song of Kanzada As one may sip Stranger's bowl, you gave yourself, but not your soul. I wonder, now that time has passed, where you will come to rest at last. You gave your beauty for an hour. I held it gently as a flower. You wished to leave me, told me so. I kissed your feet and let you go. The Teak Forest Whether I loved you, who shall say? Whether I drifted down your way In the endless river of chance and change, And you woke the strange, unknown longings That have no names, But burn us all in their hidden flames, Who shall say? Life is a strange and a wayward thing. We heard the bells of the temples ring, the married children in passing sing. The month of marriage, the month of spring, was full of the breath of sunburnt flowers that bloom in a fiercer light than ours, and under a sky more fiercely blue. I came to you. You told me tales of your vivid life, where death was cruel and danger rife, 
of deep dark forests, of poison trees, of pains and passions that scorch and freeze, of southern noontides and eastern nights, where love grew frantic with strange delights, while men were slaying and maidens danced, till I, who listened, lay still entranced. Then, swift as a swallow heading south, I kissed your mouth. One night, when the plains were bathed in blood from sunset light in a crimson flood, we wandered under the young teak trees whose branches whined in the light night breeze. You led me down to the water's brink, the spring where the panthers come to drink at night. There is always water here, be the season never so parched and sere. Have we the souls of beasts in the forms of men? I would have tasted your life blood then. The night fell swiftly. This sudden land can never lend us a twilight strand. Twixt the daylight shore and the ocean night, but takes as it gives at once the light. We laid us down on the steep hillside, while far below us wild peacocks cried, and we sometimes heard in the sunburnt grass the stealthy steps of the jungle pass. We listened, knew not whether they went on love or hunger the more intent. And under your kisses, I hardly knew whether I loved or hated you. But your words were flame and your kisses fire. And who shall resist a strong desire? Not I, whose life is a broken boat on a sea of passions, adrift, afloat. And whether I came in love or hate, that I came to you, was written by fate. In every hue of the blood-red sky, in every tone of the peacock's cry. While every gust of the jungle night was fanning the flame, you had set alight. For these things have power to stir the blood, and compel us all to their own chance mood. And to love or not, we are no more free than a ripple to rise and leave the sea. We are ever and always slaves of these, of the suns that scorch and the winds that freeze, of the faint sweet scents of the sultry air, of the half-heard howl from the far-off lair. These chance things master us ever, compel to the heights of heaven, the depths of hell. Whether I love you, you do not ask, nor waste yourself on the thankless task. I give your kisses at least return. What matter whether they freeze or burn? I feel the strength of your fervent arms. What matter whether it heals or harms? You are wise. You take what the gods have sent. You ask no questions, but rest content. So I am with you to take your kiss. And perhaps I value you more for this. For this is wisdom. To love, to live, to take what fate or the gods may give. To ask no question, to make no prayer. To kiss the lips and caress the hair. Speed passion's ebb as you greet its flow, to have, to hold, and, in time, let go. And this is our wisdom. We rest together on the great lone hills in the storm-filled weather, and watch the skies as they pale and burn, the golden stars in their orbits turn while love is with us, and time and peace, and life has nothing to give but these. But whether you love me, who shall say, or whether you, drifting down my way in the great sad river of chance and change, with your looks so weary and words so strange, lit my soul from some hidden flame, 
to a passionate longing without a name. Who shall say, not I, who am but a broken boat, content for a while to drift afloat in the little noontide of love's delights between two nights. End of section one, India's Love Lyrics by Lawrence Hope, recorded by Helen Williford Lauer.